Epilogue I would destroy the world if I could have it. Oh. Christina woke up from a deep sleep. Her body was heavy and her consciousness was unclear. Her last memory ends with her descending into the dungeon. Here is. Her limbs were restrained against the wall. She tries to break free, but she can't get any power. It seems that the magic power is blocked. Uya, it looks like you've woken up. As expected. When she looked toward the voice, she saw that it was Isaac. Why, I'm being detained. Christina said. Because I detained you. That's so. You're not surprised. I thought you are a shallow person. You are hiding something, generally people like you. It's very informative. What about the others? Princess Alexia and Clairsan are under my lord. My lord? Yes, under my lord. He repeated the same words. He didn't seem to intend to say any more. Suzuki Kuen sleeps there. Isaac pointed to a wall a short distance away. Suzuki was also detained there, just like Christina. Suzuki. Christina let out a breath of relief. Unfortunately, he may never wake up again. W.H., what do you mean? The gas that put you all to sleep is a deleterious drug for those with low magic power. It is not uncommon for them to fall into an eternal, unawakened slumber. Suzuki. It's not like you, Christina-san. He was just a lowly nobleman from a branch family. There should be no need for you to grieve. That's right, but... When Isaac pointed it out, Christina realized she was upset. As he said, Suzuki is just a low-ranking nobleman from a branch family. For Christina, the daughter of a duke, there should be plenty of replacements. I thought his ability would benefit the Hope family. That's all. I see. Well, it doesn't matter whether Suzuki Kuen lives or dies. It doesn't matter, you said. Christina glared at Isaac. Yes, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to finish my job. What are you going to do? Christina San's body has great potential. We will make use of it for our organization. Gossip. What is this organization? Is this the rumored Shadow Garden? Shadow Garden? Please do not lump us in with such an organization with such a short history. We have ruled the world since long ago, and... Let's stop, there's no point in me telling you about it. You will be a mindless puppet anyway. Saying so, Isaac took out a syringe with a red liquid. Let's get the job done quickly. If we are slow, we will not make it in time for the return of the commemorative right hand. You should be able to become the second children. Unfortunately, Suzuki Kuen can't even become the third. Isaac sneered and pressed the syringe against Christina's arm. Stop. That's right, where is Nina Senpai? That woman is disappeared. Isaac frowned. Disappeared? I was sure I had put you all to sleep. But before I knew it, she was gone. There was no way she could have made it out of the sanctuary alive anyway. Good grief, I'll write a cleanup letter later. Saying so, Isaacs puts pressure on the syringe. No. It's time to say goodbye. At that moment, something moved at the edge of his vision. You're so noisy. Even though I was sleeping comfortably. The voice was Suzuki, who should have been asleep. Sue, Suzuki. W.H., you, are you awake? You can tell by looking at me, right? Is that really so surprising? He says lazily and yawning. W.L., whatever, waking up won't change the outcome. I'll get rid of the eyesore that is you first. 
Isaac heads toward the restrained Suzuki with a syringe. Get rid? Humph. I'll make you a silent puppet. The needle of the syringe sticks into Suzuki's neck. Are you going to get rid of me? Suzuki said, a smile forming at the edges of his lips. That's not going to happen. The next moment, Isaac's body shook. The syringe filled with red liquid fell and rolled. W.H. Go Fugiho. Suzuki's right arm is hitting Isaac in the stomach. It's his palm heel. A powerful palm strike struck Isaac in the abdomen. That can't be. Why, the restraints have been undone. The magic must have been sealed. Isaac stepped back, holding his stomach. Blood bubbles were dripping from his lips. It's easy. Just remove the joints. Suzuki then releases the restraints on his left arm. The joint deformed in a movement impossible for a human being, and when it came out of the restraints, it returned to its original position as if it were regenerating in reverse. The restraints on both legs he disables in the same way. Ridiculous. So what are you going to do? I thought you were going to get rid of me. Don't underestimate me. Isaac's eyes flushed with rage. Just inferior student, how dare you to taunt me? He drew his sword and held it ready. Suzuki, too, reaches for the sword at his waist and tilts his head. Where is my sword? The only thing on Suzuki's waist was the scabbard. Too bad. I got rid of your weapon. I see. Suzuki took a fountain pen from his pocket. He then removes the lid of the fountain pen and points the tip at Isaac. Then, this should be enough. F fountain pen. You've got to be kidding me. Isaac's magic power erupted. He stepped in an instant and swung his sword out to the side. The sword's trajectory was definitely supposed to cut Suzuki in two. If only the fountain pen didn't get in the way. Suzuki caught the sword with the tip of his fountain pen. A high-pitched, glass-shattering sound echoed, and Isaac's sword shattered into pieces. Suzuki thrusts out a fountain pen as it is. W.H. Gahyu. Then a sharp tip pierced Isaac. One step, two steps, Isaac slowly backs away. He touched the fountain pen stuck in his neck with his eyes as if he were looking at an incredible object. Gaho, with just a fountain pen. Drip. Red ink drips from the fountain pen. I'll need it back. Otherwise, I won't be able to keep a diary. Suzuki grabbed the fountain pen stuck in Isaac's neck. Wah, it, stop it, stop. At the same time as the fountain pen was pulled out, a large amount of blood was gushed out. Blood ink stains the floor. Ah, uh, a. Eh. Stunned, Isaac knelt down. Then he looks up at Suzuki and his eyes widen. His gaze fell on Suzuki's collar. Its remaining magic power was showing an unbelievable number. What? Is that magic power? Gaho. Isaac falls down, coughing up blood. I am in a place like this. Geho. Ah. The blood flowed unstoppably from his neck, and eventually his breathing faded. Suzuki looks at the blood-stained fountain pen with a bored look and mutters. It's dirty, I don't want it. He then dumped it over Isaac's corpse. He turns and walks up to Christina. Christina was puzzled when Suzuki who had bad eyes looked down at her. Ah, that. Her heart was racing for some reason. Not knowing what to say, she stared up at Suzuki. I'm glad you're safe. Suzuki released Christina's restraints. T thank you Suzuki. She said in a small voice that seemed to disappear. I just did the obvious. Now, let's hurry. 
I'm worried about the other students. Ayano, wait, Suzuki. As Suzuki was about to walk away, Christina stopped him. I think that. I was wrong about you. I said you were an inferior student who couldn't do anything. But that wasn't true. Christina looked down, embarrassed. If you don't mind, when this case is over, go to the main house. Christina Nasan is not wrong. Suzuki is an inferior student. Suzuki said so while keeping his back turned. Eh, but, that's... You are not wrong. You are not wrong about anything. It was the coldest voice of Suzuki that Christina had ever heard. Ah, uh, did I say something that bothered you? No, you didn't. Just. Don't get involved with me. What spreads out before me is a bloody road. A man who cannot live in a world of the shining Sunday. Suzuki never turned around. He spoke with his back straightened, as if rejecting the world. What are you carrying? I have a mission. A mission that requires me to take on the sins of the world, but I must still complete it. If you get involved, you will be hurt and stained with blood. Then Suzuki finally turned around. Christina gasped when she saw his eyes. His eyes were as inorganic as glass balls, seemingly devoid of all emotion. But that's not true. Far deep within that glass ball, emotions swirled like a black flame. Suzuki gently reaches for Christina's neck. Christina's thin chin lifts and Suzuki's face comes closer. Suzuki. A voice like an exhaled breath escaped. Christina is fascinated by his deep eyes and closes hers. Then, snap, a dry sound echoes. Eh. When she opened her eyes, her collar was gone. Ah. The collar. How? He did not answer Christina's question. Before she knew it, his collar was gone, too. We don't have time. Let's hurry. Suzuki walks away with his back turned. His back was lonely. Wah! Wait, Suzuki! Christina chased after his back so as not to be left behind. It's time to wake up. It's not a very good situation. Feeling like she heard a voice in her head, Claire woke up. Here is. The place was a white fog, and she was strapped to what looked like an evil-looking examination table. Next to her, Alexia is also being held. Alexia, are you okay? Wake up. Oh, here is. Alexia also woke up. The two of them look around and gasp. This is. What's this? There were four cylindrical capsules. Inside were red liquid and a human being. It can't be, they are the missing students. No mistake. They're students who were on the missing persons list. Why is this happening? The magic power has been sucked out of them. To revive the demon Diabolos. Let's get out of here as soon as possible. We'll suffer the same thing. Alexia tries to break the restraints, but it doesn't budge. Claire tried, but the same thing happened. It looks like the magic is sealed. That Isaac bastard, how dare you! Alexia said as if to spit out. At that moment, the cylindrical capsules began to move. With a dull sound of movement, the red liquid drained from the two capsules. W what? I don't know. At that moment, a voice sounded from behind them. Have you woken up? It's just right. The capsules are ready, I'd say there's about 10% left. Saying that, it was a boy with silver-white hair who appeared. The two were often at a loss for words at the sight of this beautiful figure, which looked as if it had just stepped out of a fairy tale. You are. I'm Fenrir. 
the fifth seat of the rounds. Why, you are Fenrir. The boy, who introduced himself as Fenrir, was young enough to be the same age as Alexia and the others, or maybe younger. Apparent age means nothing in the face of eternal life. Fenrir said as he stood in front of the two capsules from which the red liquid had drained. What are you going to do? You will enter this capsule. It's to revive Diabolo's right arm. I was going to suck the magic out of the collar, but it's convenient that you went out of your way of coming. Thanks to you, I saved myself a lot of trouble. Fenrir chuckled scornfully. The school is in an uproar right now. Did you think you can get away with this? Claire said. Who would punish us? The knights? Or you? T that's. We live in the underworld. From the front world, you will never reach us. There's the shadow garden. Alexia said quietly, and Fenner's movement stopped. Shadow garden will punish us, huh, cuckoo? He gives a small laugh. What's funny? I never thought a princess of a country would put her trust in people she doesn't know. I just thought it was pathetic. Alexia's face turned red. The sound of biting back teeth echoed. In the first place, will Shadow Garden really punish us? What is this Shadow Garden organization? You don't know anything. Saying so, he pulls the body of the thing that was the student out of the capsule and disposes of it. They are residents of the underworld, just like us. They are not the ones who will punish us. Even if one of us loses, the one who wins will rule the underworld again. That's all. Fenrir looked back. His eyes had turned red. Well, the preparations are complete. It's time to revive. Fenrir went to Claire first. Claire Cagino. There have been reports of you using strange powers. Fenrir stands beside the examination table and lifts her chin. Let go of me. Indeed, the blood is thick, but not so much that it's abnormal. Well, I guess we'll find out when we check it out. Saying so, he pressed a syringe filled with red liquid against Claire's neck. Claire shakes her head and resists, but Fenrir's power is strong. It's useless. The needle of the syringe was stuck in her neck. At that time. Good grief, how long are you going to make me wait? Aurora's voice echoed in Claire's head, and dense magic power overflowed. The syringe shattered and the restraints burst. Wah, what is that magic power? Fenrir distances himself. I'll lend you a little help. Thank you, Aurora. Claire said and drew her sword and destroyed Alexia's restraints. Nice, Claire. Alexia also drew her sword and held it ready. Aurora, that's what you said, right, Claire Cagino. Fenrir looked straight at Claire. I said. Do you know Aurora? Cuckoo, I see. Let's see if it's real. Blood Fung, answer my call. Fenrir pulled a sword out of the void. The sword was longer than his height and had a stagnant, blood-red blade. Blood Fung, the magic sword of a swordsman who was once called the strongest. No way, really. Alexia muttered. She felt a heavy pressure from the magic sword that sent a shiver down her spine. Be careful, Claire. I know. Aurora won't fight? You probably don't have much magic left. If I use your body, the loss will be too great. Besides, maybe you should learn to use the powers too. Right. Claire needed the magic inside her body. Little by little, she began to grasp the sensation of mixing two different kinds of power. Then Claire closed the gap at once. However, Fenrir lightly catches Claire's sword. Just this much, huh? What? 
red tentacles were wrapped around the blood fun. The tentacle extends from Claire's right arm and moves to entangle the blood fawn at her direction. With this power, don't underestimate me. Fenrir swung his blood fawn. With just that one movement, the red tentacles burst forth. Claire was in the next move. She stepped inside the gap, dodged the blood fawn, and then went on to cleave Fenrir's torso. A dull thud sounded. Fenrir had caught Claire's sword with the hilt of his blood fawn. What, with the hilt? Not bad, from the one who just won the Bushin festival. But it's only a child's sword. Fenrir reversed his blood fawn, flicked Claire's sword, and repelled her chin with the hilt as it was. Ugu. The impact was light. Claire leapt backward as quickly as she could to lessen the blow's force but her mouth was cut and her lips turned red. Fenrir's pursuit of Claire, who had been knocked out of her stance, was closing in on her. At that moment, Fenrir's movement stopped. For some reason, a sword had been stuck in his left shoulder. As expected. If I'd kept moving, it would have pierced my heart. It was Alexia. I knew you were looking for an opening. But since when? Fenrir stepped back, pulling his blood fawn. Blood spurts from his left shoulder, but he doesn't care at all. Ha! With a sharp exhale, Fenrir swung his blood fawn. The blow was sharp and contained enormous power. Alexia readied herself to defend with her sword. Her movement was not fast. There was not much magic power in the sword. There was no way to defend against it. Blood fangs are shattering Alexia's sword. On the verge of it, Alexia takes a half step back. Then she changes the angle of her sword and lets the impact flow. Heh. As it is, she turns to counterattack. With the shortest movement and the least amount of magic power, she aims for Fenrir's vital spot. Fenrir was a dead man. With his blood fawn swung out, he seemed to have no choice but to wait to be pierced by Alexia's stab. But Fenrir kicked the floor with his front foot. The floor cracked with a tremendous vibration, and he repositioned himself with a movement impossible for a normal person. Alexia's sword pierced the sky and made a single scratch on Fenrir's cheek. Just as it was, Fenrir removed himself from the gap wide open. The common sword. Compared to Princess Iris, it is a scorned sword. The common sword is not without its worth, right? I'm looking forward to the next hundred years. Swords are cumulative. But that's why the difference is so great. Saying that, Fenrir closed his eyes. Let's get serious a little. The atmosphere changed. An unfathomable magic power welled up from within Fenrir. At the same time, his hair turned white. His face was covered with deep wrinkles and his limbs withered into thinness. Then he slowly opened his eyes. The innocent boy had transformed into a withered old man. So that's your real form. He was a weak old man who looked as if he would fall if pushed. But Alexia and Claire never underestimated him because despite his appearance, the weight of the pressure was rising tremendously. Cold sweat runs down their cheeks. I remembered him. He is the demon of Midgar. The demon of Midgar? Aurora's mutterings were picked up by Claire. Long ago, he was a feared manslayer in the Midgar region. He continued to slay people greedily just to increase his power. He must have been old already. To think that someone knew that name. Is it Aurora? Fenrir said in a hoarse voice. The Witch of Calamity, as I thought, the real one? Are you going to take that girl as your medium? Aurora, what does it mean? Concentrate. It's his trick to catch you off guard. But. Claire. Eh? 
Fenrir's blood fung was extended. The blade, long and slender like a whip, approaches Claire's neck. Stunned, Claire looked at the approaching death. However, the next moment, Claire's eyes turn violet. More than a hundred tentacles shoot out, and when the blood fung are repelled, they approach Fenrir as it is. Cuckoo, this is it, this power. The red tentacles that rain down incessantly make Fenrir stumble with his willow-like body. The tentacles repeatedly graze his body and turn his clothes into tatters. But not a single wound could be inflicted on his body. Then, abruptly, all the blood tentacles popped and disappeared. My magic power! Claire with violet eyes, breathing roughly and falling to her knees. Her magic power was only thirty-six remaining. You've gotten weaker, Aurora. Or maybe I'm getting stronger. It's just that this body is just weak. And the blood fung blows Claire away. Ugu. Barely avoiding a fatal wound, she rolled over, unable to even regain her footing. And Claire's eyes went from violet back to red. How dare you, to Claire! Alexia launches the attack. His movement is the shortest and the smallest. But Fenrir was far beyond that. What Alexia saw was a red afterimage. Then her sword shattered into pieces. Ah, ah. A sword is an accumulation of experience, the peak that exceeds a thousand years is too great. Saying so, Fenrir took a large upper stance. My, sword is. Her sword shattered into pieces. The humiliation of the past comes back. She has continued to train so that she will never be frustrated again. However, no matter how much she accumulated, the pinnacle of the sword was still too far away. Tears welled up in the corners of Alexia's eyes. It's over. The blood fong was swung down from the top. At that moment, a sharp, windswept sound could be heard. Fenrir stopped his attack and quickly moved himself out of range. Click, the fountain pen was thrust into the ground. Who are you? You are. There was an ordinary male student with bad eyesight, Suzuki. Are you all right? He slowly walks over and pulls out a fountain pen stuck in the ground. Princess Alexia, come over here. Saying so, it was Christina who made Alexia withdraw. I, I still. It's reckless, you have not enough magic power. Before she knew it, Alexia's magic power was also below 100. Biting her lip, Alexia looks at Suzuki. Fenrir is strong. He can't do it alone. I don't think Suzuki will simply lose. Christina's eyes were clear as she said so. Suzuki faced Fenrir alone. I ask you again. Who are you? Fenrir looked at Suzuki. I'm Suzuki. I'm a first-year student at Midgar Magic Swordsman Academy. Suzuki said as he turned his fountain pen in his palm. Just a student. Suddenly, Fenrir reared his blood fun. The red blade twitched like a whip and grazed Suzuki's bangs. For a mere student, you have a good grasp of my... My? What are you talking about? With a cool face, Suzuki stepped forward. That's Fenrir's my... Fenrir's eyes narrow sharply. Tap, the sound of Suzuki's footsteps echoed loudly. Again, the sound of footsteps. The next moment, a barrage of attacks by blood fong started. Red afterimages poured down from above, below, right and left at a tremendous speed. Each of the sword stripes was beautiful, like a dance that caught one's eye. At the center of it, Suzuki held up the fountain pen. There are four of those on each side, tucked between his fingers as if they were claws. The pen nib shines in gold. Then the red sword dance and the golden light intersected. 
K-I-N, Kin Kin, the countless consecutive sounds of battle. Red after images and golden lights are dancing in the fog. It's amazing. Stunned, Alexia muttered so. Fenrir's sword was definitely worthy of being one of the strongest. And Suzuki's ability to compete with that sword with a fountain pen is also immeasurable. Compared to the knights of the Royal Guard of the Midgar Kingdom and the Seven Swords of the Vigalta Empire, it is not at all inferior. Too strong. Christina muttered. As she said, Suzuki's ability was far beyond that of a student. Who is he? Alexia's question was natural. I don't know. But he's carrying something big. There is a mission that must be accomplished. That's what he said. Mission. And the power to do so. Alexia clenched her fists. Claire San, are you all right? Christina helps Claire, who has collapsed. S. Somehow. Suzuki Kuen is fighting, isn't he? Claire said painfully. We can't keep up with this fight. Let's see it through. Right. Claire squeezed her right hand, which had a magic circle engraved on it. In the fog, the battle between Fenrir and Suzuki continued. The momentum is tilting little by little. The red afterimage is pushing the golden light. The nib of a fountain pen, shining in the fog, is slowly receding. The reason for this was the difference in my between the two. Fenrir's blood fang is far longer than a normal sword, and Suzuki's fountain pen is not even close to a normal sword. As a result, Fenrir attacked unilaterally, and Suzuki had no choice but to go on the defensive. The outcome has been decided. You, too, who seek to master combat, will find that this gap will never be filled. In between the barrage of attacks, Fenrir's voice can be heard. I'm not so sure about that. Suzuki kicked the ground and flew. Then, he holds up the fountain pens and throws them at Fenrir. Eight fountain pens became golden light. A useless struggle. Fenrir handles the fountain pen with his blood fine as he steps back. A few grazed his body and wounded him, but that was it. Having thrown his weapon, Suzuki had no more way to resist. Or it should have been so. What? Suzuki held eight more fountain pens in the air. Special move Golden Storm. And fountain pens released one after another. The light fell on Fenrir as if it were rain. So annoying. But Fenrir's skills were also extraordinary. He dodges the pouring fountain pens with smooth body movement, and if he decides he can't dodge it, he flicks it away with his blood fawn. The golden rain fell to the ground without hitting Fenrir. And all the rain stopped. A tremendous number of fountain pens stuck in the ground. In the center of it all, Fenrir stood. He did not move an inch. No, he could not move. Checkmate because behind him stood Suzuki. Is the fountain pen a decoy? The pen is mightier than the sword, as they say. Suzuki holds a single fountain pen against Fenrir's neck. You've got me there. I think I played a little too much. It's been a while since I've had a playmate. So, this makes me very happy. Old man's bad habit. Say whatever you want. Without listening to Fenrir's words to the end, Suzuki pierced his fountain pen. It pierces Fenrir's neck and blood gushes out. Geho! You're an impatient young man. You must hear the old man till the end. Glare, Fenrir's eyes turned red. An enormous amount of magic power overflows and repels Suzuki. The wound on his neck heals as if regenerating. We're done playing. Let's deal with the small fry first. Fenrir's face turned toward Alexia and the others. His first prey was one of them, Christina. Ah. 
a shiver ran down Christina's spine as she stared into the red eyes. She was almost crushed by a pressure she had never felt before. Goodbye, young lady. Then a red slash then swung down at Christina. She just stares dumbfounded at the impending death. Just before the blood fawn cut her in two, a figure stepped in. The figure takes her in his arms and takes the slash as a substitute. Blood splashes flew. Suzuki. You. The figure was Suzuki. I'm glad you're safe. Geho. Suzuki vomits a lot of blood. Suzuki. Suzuki, it's okay. Why protecting me? I have something to apologize to you. Suzuki said, his mouth reddening. No need to apologize, that's not what's important right now. No, it has to be now. Because I'm... Eh? Not Suzuki. Suzuki's tone of voice changed. A low voice, as if echoing from the depths. His eyes turn red. He's dead. My true self is... Numerous fountain pens stuck in the blood melt away. It became black slime and enveloped Suzuki's body. Sue, Suzuki. At the bizarre sight, Christina and the others backed away. The black slime enveloping Suzuki wriggles eerily to reveal himself. My name is Shadow. The one who lurks in the shadows and hunts the shadows. The man, wearing a long jet black coat with a deep hood, drew a black sword and said so. Shadow. Alexia's startled voice. Shadow. Christina was surprised, too. But as she looked up at Shadow, she felt her heart beating somewhat. Shadow, huh? I knew you would come. Fenrir shows no signs of agitation. In the meantime, he faces Shadow by stretching his magic power. Did you dress up as a student and look for an opening? What a tricky man. What, it's just a sideshow. What a shameless. For a mere sideshow, it is an elaborate one. I'm not so much of an old geezer as to misread your intentions. Ho! Oh. People lie to hide things they don't want others to know. Behind every lie is the truth. It makes sense. You went to the trouble of disguising yourself as a student, looking for an opening and avoiding a head-on fight with me. It was a caution. You tried to hide your fear of me with the lie of a sideshow. Foo, don't make me laugh, old man. If so, it's too bad. I wonder how powerful this shadow man really is. Is he a man beyond my imagination who has reached the pinnacle of swordsmanship through the long ages? It was a little fun. Saying that, Fenrir holds up his blood fung. Do you want to give it a try? Shadow lightly holds up his jet black sword. That's what I'm going to do. Fenrir's hips fell deep. With a large backward pull of his blood fung, he half jumped. Shadow, don't let me down. The next moment, a white fog swirled around and Fenrir's figure disappeared. Secret ancient swordsmanship, Utsasimi. Fenrir appeared behind Shadow. The blood fawn has already been swung out and is in the form to make the next attack. Ho! Oh. You prevent it? Fenrir said happily. A single scratch on Shadow's long coat. It is a claw mark left by Fenrir. I've been attacked by fast swords many times. But this one is... Slow. Shadow repaired the wound on his long coat and turned around. Just once look, and you realize how slow it is? A white fog swirled around Fenrir. Interesting. Shadow was quietly assessing the flow of his magic power. The next moment, Fenrir's figure disappeared again. Another scratch was carved into Shadow's long coat. It was deeper than the first hit. Again, you still prevent it? 
Fenrir prepared to make the next attack behind Shadow. It's slow, after all. Shadow stroked and repaired the scratches on his long coat. Can you see Utsa see me? I was on the verge of seeing it, but I couldn't see it. Then why you can prevent it? The moment the blades touch, I step aside. That's it. Jujitsu, huh? I heard there is a martial art that neutralizes attacks like willow trees. I never learned it. Then is it instinct? Nothing too pretentious about that. Then why? Practice. Ho! Oh, that is the truth of martial arts. Then, Fenrir drops his hips deep again and holds his blood fawn. Then take this old wolf's training. White fog swirled around. I see. Shadow waved his sword. Towards an empty space. Splendid. And then Fenrir disappeared. The next moment, Fenrir appears behind Shadow. Blood spurts from Fenrir's shoulder. I have been spotted, huh? Fenrir said, holding the wound on his shoulder. No, I followed the flow of magic power. I see. My trick has been revealed? Utsusimi is an afterimage created by magic power. Its counterpart is a slow sword that erases its presence to the limit. Indeed. When you were looking at Utsusimi, I was already swinging my sword. You have seen through me. That ability, was it real? Fenrir turns and takes up his stance again. Are you going to continue? Of course. I have been waiting for this day for a long time. There is no better moment to test my training. I cannot swing the sword alone. And he extends the blood fawn longer. Take my secret technique that sublimated Utsusimi, Shadow. Fenrir swung his blood fawn. But Shadow had avoided it before that. The white fog cracks, and a scar is carved into the ground. Then, after a delay, a whip-like blood fong runs through the ground. The order was reversed, and the attack and defense were further accelerated by Fenrir's technique. The blood fong was increasing. One, two, three. Each time Fenrir swung his blood fong, the number increased, finally reaching nine. Fenrir, holding nine blood fang, laughs. This is the peak of swordsmanship, Utsusimi's blood fang. Nine blades strike shadow simultaneously from all directions. Ho! Shadow let out a sigh. Are all the blades that I see an afterimage? And he closed his eyes, as if he had given up. The next moment, the nine slashes made shadow's body dance. To the right, to the left, up, down, like a wild doll game, he was cruelly beaten down. Shadow! Shadow San! Alexia and Christina shouted. That's how badly he was beaten. Fenrir looks down at Shadow, who has fallen helplessly. Twitch, Shadow's fingers moved. Is it over? It was Shadow who said so. I can't even get a scratch on you. Fenrir said so. It was a strange conversation, as if the winner and loser were reversed. Fenrir swings his blood fangs down at the fallen shadow. The blood fong easily cut shadow in two and then carved a deep scar on the ground. However, there was no blood from shadow's body. On the contrary, the body fades into thin air. Is it an afterimage? Fenrir muttered, as if giving up. I was shown a valuable sword. A voice comes from the fog. Tap, 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 nine footsteps echoing, nine shadow appeared. By just once. Fenrir gasped. Nine black swords extended. They danced in the fog like dragons. Excellent. There was a tinge of joy in Fenrir's voice. Secret technique, Utsusimi's atomic. And the nine dragons devoured Fenrir.
The first one bit off his right arm and shredded it, and the second had his left arm. The third one chewed up the right leg and the fourth one the left leg. The fifth and sixth cut off both sides of the torso, the seventh pierced the chest, and the eighth severed the neck. And the ninth one bit his head. Do you still alive? Shadow spoke to the living head that the ninth one was holding in its mouth. Go Fu. At the last moment, I saw the peak of the martial arts. You showed me something good. In a hushed voice, Fenrir said. There is no such thing as a peak of martial arts. Shadow said in a bored tone. What are you saying, you are? Beyond the peak, there is a further peak. That's it. What? When people think they have reached the peak, they stop walking. I see, that's why I... Regret appeared on Fenrir's face. I can't see the peak yet. Then the jaws of the ninth dragon closed. With a crunch, Fenrir's head shattered. Shadow flipped up his long jet black coat and disappeared into the depths of the white fog. Wah! Wait, Shadow! Alexia shouted. Shadow stopped in the fog. Tell me! Who are you? What are you fighting for? Alexia waited for a reply. But Shadow made no reply as he turned his back. I want to protect my country. I don't want my loved ones to feel sad. That's why I decided to fight. What about you? Can we trust you? Don't get involved. I told you so. This is not the time to be talking like that. We're fighting desperately. If we were as strong as you, it might be a trivial matter. Maybe we are insignificant. But, even weak people like me are desperately trying to live. Shadow turned around slowly. His blood-red eyes look at Alexia. We eliminate obstacles for our purposes. That's all. He said this in a low voice that seemed to echo from the depths. What is your purpose? Shadow, what are you going to do with the world? At Alexia's question, Shadow moved his expression for the first time. He laughed, a small laugh. Then, he swung his jet black sword to the side. Beyond that is an eerie device in the fog. A metallic sound echoed and the device was cut in two. The collar is. When looked, Alexia and Claire's collars were broken. Shadow. When she looked back, Shadow was gone. No trace of him could be found anywhere anymore. If only I were stronger. Alexia clenched her fists tightly. Claire San. Are you okay? Christina supports Claire. Why yeah? Claire says, holding her stomach. She may need medical treatment. Princess Alexia, let's get out of here. I wonder where the exit is. At that moment, they heard footsteps coming from the fog. Oh I, I finally found you. From there, a petite girl, Nina, appeared. Nina. Thank goodness, where have you been? Claire's face broke into a smile despite her pain. Sorry, sorry, I barely got away from Isaac Cohen, but I got lost. But I found a way out. Teehee-hee, Nina laughs and points to the exit. You can be relied upon. Shall we go? Alexia said so and turned her back. At that moment, Nina moves quickly. First, Alexia collapsed. Next, Claire and Christina fell almost simultaneously. It was a terribly fast handsword. Nina looks down at the three unconscious people and mutters. Good grief, this is an unpleasant role to play. She lets out a small sigh and directs her voice toward the fog. Everything is ready. Zeta Sama. And then a golden-haired beast man and a pink blonde girl appeared. Thank you for your hard work. 
After all, why don't you enter the shadow garden? Victoria speaks to Nina. You can be the numbers in no time. Confused, Nina looks at Zeta. Nina is better off not being in the shadow garden. Because she can move independently, she can counterplot. Zeta said. Then I shall continue as I have been. UNN. Be a good friend of Claire Soma as you have always been. Until the time comes. Yes. Nina made a white robe out of slime and put on a deep hood. She then picked up the unconscious Claire and proceeded to the door at the far end of the sanctuary. Zeta gives instructions and holds Claire in place on a pedestal inscribed with ancient letters. When she poured her magic power into the pedestal, flames lit up on either side of the door. There's no turning back now. Nina said to Zeta. UNN. But Alpha Sama's policy is. Alpha is naive. In her way, the wicked will rise again and the world will repeat its mistakes. So we will rule the world. So that mistakes will never happen again. Zeta stared at the flames on the pedestal. As if he was envisioning something beyond the many flickering flames. Shadow Sama, who has gained eternal life, will become God. This world does not need the holy faith. We are to preach a new teaching. Victoria said with her eyes shining with excitement. Is this really the right thing to do? This is our mission. Muttering so, Zeta pours magic power into the pedestal. The magic letters on the pedestal dance, which lead to a door sealed with chains. The chains creaked and squeaked as they shone. Goo, ga. Claire trembled as she was held in place by the pedestal. She opened her red eyes and screamed, her face contorted in pain. Triple A, triple A, 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 A. Claire! Nina cuddles up to Claire. Zeta Sama, Claire is. It's just a rejection. It'll settle immediately. But. Her body is essential to control the resurrected Diabolos. And the chains shatter little by little. A new, ominous magic circle emerges on Claire's right hand. <coughs> Claire screamed. At the same time, the chains shattered and the innermost door opened. There was nothing there. Just an endless darkness. Claire's magic circle glowed strongly. It's a success. Victoria gave a mysterious smile. The right arm and the left arm are now in place. Nina will continue to keep a close watch on Claire Sama. Zeta carefully examines the magic circle engraved on Claire. This is Zeta Sama's choice. Nina said. She wipes the sweat off Claire's unconscious body. Alpha and I will know which choice is the right one sooner or later. Saying that, Zeta turned her back and started walking. Until that time comes, we will lurk in the shadows. Then she disappeared into the deep darkness. I was in a blank white space. I was satisfied that it had been a long time since I had had a good battle and role-playing experience. That terrorist old man's sword was quite interesting. Is that what they call the old man's wisdom? It was cool, so I rip it off, but thanks to that, it led me to the best possible finish. Learning the enemy's techniques in battle and using them to fight back. This is also romantic. And the performance as Suzuki Kuen was also excellent. By dressing up as him, the depth of the shadow may have been increased. Where there is light, there is shadow, this is truly the eminence in shadow. While I was thinking about that, before I knew it, I was here. Here is. I look around. It looks familiar, it's where I met the child Violet Zan. Yeah, we meet again. In the middle of the white space was a little girl holding her knees. She was covered in wounds. 
Are you okay? I pour magic power into her and heal her wounds. Oh. The girl looked up. Her face was stained red with tears of blood. Thank you. You're welcome. What happened? Nothing. It's the usual. I see. Un. She looked up at me and smiled. I finally met you. Oniai-chan. Finally? Because my power is strong at the center. Fumu, right, this. Saying so, I took out a red jewel from my pocket. It's important to you, isn't it? Is it okay? One hundred million zenny. Just pay me back when you succeed. Thank you. Saying so, the girl received a red jewel. I've been waiting for this. That's so. May I ask what that is? This is. The girl smiled. Like a crescent moon, the edges of her lips lifted. This is my. The girl's face is distorted like an ugly monster, and then the ominous magic power overflows. The pure white space is being painted black. The girl moved her lips slightly and muttered. Malice. I didn't hear her voice, but the girl certainly said so. Then, a dark emotion swirled. Man, woman, old man, and child appeared one after another to scorn the girl. The next moment, however, they are transformed into squishy lumps of flesh by an unknown monster. It was repeated hundreds and thousands of times, and when I suddenly came to my senses, I was standing on the roof of the school. It's that place where I first met little Violet San. I could see the setting sun in the distance. It was an ordinary, peaceful academy. Fumu, maybe it would have been better if I didn't give it to her? I tilted my head. The silver-haired girl was looking down at the schoolyard with her red eyes. All the knights could get from their investigation was the student's testimony. No evidence was found. The silver-haired girl leaned against the window of an empty classroom and muttered. So why did you call me? In the classroom, besides the silver-haired girl, there was an ordinary boy with dark hair. Because you are also involved. I said, I'm sleeping in the dormitory and nothing happened. Claire is the only one who hasn't woken up since then. The knights want to hear about it. Ah, about Nasan, huh? But I don't know anything about it, so I have nothing to tell. I bet. You really don't know anything. What is going on in this world, how deep the darkness of the world is? Saying that, the silver-haired girl gave a small laugh. That's why I told them it's useless to ask me. The knights don't expect to get anything out of you either. It's just a formality. I hope so. The dark-haired boy said this in dissatisfaction. A cold winter wind blew in through the window and swept the girl's beautiful silver hair. It's cold. Could you please close the window? Nay, Pochi. The silver-haired girl ignored the dark-haired boy's request and continued talking. You're so peaceful and I envy you. Is that sarcasm? No. I want peace, that's what I hope. I don't understand you one bit. When the dark-haired boy replied, the silver-haired girl smiled. A dark-haired boy called from outside the classroom. Well then. I'm going because the knights are calling me. The dark-haired boy puts his hand on the classroom door. Nay, Pochi. The silver-haired girl stops him. Have you ever wanted eternal life? I really want it. The boy's neck turned around with tremendous speed. I is that so? I would destroy the world if I could have it. It was a mistake to ask you. If you find it, please let me know. The dark-haired boy said so with a straight face and left the classroom. 
the silver-haired girl who was left alone lets out a small sigh. Eternal life, huh? Shadow is not a worldly-minded person like Pochi. If Shadow is seeking eternal life, then the world is. The silver-haired girl looked up at the sky. The cloudless gray sky stretched on forever.